It's time for the Sports Blitz, the only live streamed local sports show in Arkansas with all the latest on the sports stories that matter to you. Welcome, welcome, welcome into a rainy day Sports Blitz here at RiverValleyLeader.com. Mark Freeman, Weldon Braxton, Maddie Lasseter inside the Cogswell Motors studios. Got a lot of stuff to talk about today. NBA news as the free agency period has really, really heated up. Uh, we'll talk some Heat local sports. Heat it up. Yeah, I didn't even mean to do it that time. Uh, we'll talk a little NBA. We'll talk a little World Cup because uh, Belgium, who beat the United States, was bounced by Weldon's squad. Our squad is still in it. Semi-final. Pretty happy, aren't you? Yeah, we got Final Four teams. Look, for two guys that don't know anything about yeah. soccer, he's got his bachelor's. I've got something like a GED. Uh, we're doing all right because we picked two semifinalists. Uh, final four teams yeah. in the World Cup. We'll talk a little UFC, a little NFL. We're just going to hit it all today in today's CrossFit Russellville poll questions about the Razorbacks. Which one? This is a, this is a Weldon special right here. It's a good one. Which are you more confident in entering the 2014-2015 seasons in football and basketball, the quarterback and the point guard? Which of those two positions are you more confident in? You can give us a call at 968-NEWS. That's 968-6397, or you can find us on Facebook, facebook.com slash rvlnews, or facebook.com slash sportsblitz. That's where we uh, would like to have those comments directed if you can. Or you can just give us a call, like I said, at 968-NEWS. Man, well, LeBron James, the market has heated up for LeBron James. It's now yeah. looking a lot like Cleveland or Miami. Cleveland. The place LeBron James was born and raised, the place that LeBron James played the first nine, what, eight, seven or eight years of his career, and now they've they've got three out of the last four number one overall picks, and they've got some some actual chance to land LeBron James. And Miami uh, starting to get a little shaky there as Chris Bosh is being offered max money from teams like Houston. So this is becoming interesting quickly. It is because you look at, first of all, the big three as a whole and, and our belief and I think a lot of people's belief that you know they would stay together and you know they'd opt out to rework the deal, jump back in with available money to go out and, and, and bring in other players because I don't think it's debatable. They have to bring in some other players. They have to have a better supporting cast around the big three. Uh, the big three needs to get better as well. And when you say that, of course, you're talking about Dwayne Wade. He's a player who – you look at and you you know he can do more, you expect more if he can get healthy, if he can get in better shape. I believe he will, but if you're LeBron, you can't operate on beliefs and assumptions. So with that being said, the further we've gone, Mark, and you know, we were off on Friday, it seemed like this big three that at one time was a fist starting to see some space in between the fingers of that fist. Yeah. And I'm not saying it's completely over or breaking up, but you know, if Chris Bosch gets a max offer or close to a max offer from the Houston Rockets, uh, you know, then Cleveland and LeBron's looking good, then all of a sudden you may have some things. And you and I were talking before the show about Cleveland's situation. I won't get into that too much right now, but Cleveland can do some things to make itself really attractive to LeBron, but there's a lot of dynamics and drama to get over. You know, if Chris Bosh takes the money or if LeBron James goes back to Cleveland, you're talking about a fist. Uh, you're seeing two guys who could give Miami the finger. <laughs> they, could just, <laughs> they could say, here's, here's what you've, uh, you've got left. If you want to pay Dwayne Wade more than $10 million a year and you want you – know, you're asking Chris Bosh to take a huge pay cut, no matter what. Because if he can get max money anywhere, that's $19, $20 million bucks a year, and you're asking him to take 10 11 12 uh, that's that's a big pay cut for a guy who can make twice that and go. Like Houston's no like scrub team. No, this no. is a squad that's going to compete for an NBA championship, especially if they add Chris Bosh and he doesn't have to play uh, inside. He's got Dwight Howard on the team as a rim protector. He could be a very very dangerous piece there. They wouldn't guard anybody still, but at the end of the day. If he can make max money and go to Houston, I don't see how he turns it down for anything. Unless Miami just decides that they want to go crazy and you know do some really good rebuilding as far as gets uh, get a lot of I don't know who they get. Maybe Trevor Ariza, which if he's the last guy you're talking about, it's yeah. just like okay, you know it was um, it was Kyle Lowry for yeah. a couple days, and then he's just agreeing to a twelve million dollar a year bump with. Toronto so you know if I'm Chris Bosch I'm gonna it's gonna be hard for me to turn down that max money to go to Houston 
especially knowing that Dwayne Wade's not getting younger. He's going to have to sit more. There's going to be more asked of us, more uh, on the court, and then more asked of us off the court taking less money. Right. It's, it's going to be very hard for me. And then if I'm LeBron James and I can see a Cleveland roster with the potentially, you know, I want you to get into what you heard about the Cleveland uh, Minnesota talks yeah. uh, that could potentially have a big three that's better than Miami's, it'd be hard for me not to go back to Cleveland. The only stumbling block that would keep me from going back to Cleveland is my pride and my lack, my disdain for Dan Gilbert. Knowing how much I dislike Dan Gilbert, I can only imagine how much LeBron James has in his heart for Dan Gilbert, a man who you know, the the personal letter he penned about how yeah. the self proclaimed king will never win will win a championship before they do. Uh, you know, people burning his jersey on the streets. I think he would have a lot easier times, you know, saying, "Okay, I forgive you" to the fans than that owner who is a childish punk four years ago. And to me, that that's a big part of the holdup, at least for me. Now, you know, I, I see where you're coming from, and I'm actually with you along those lines. I don't know about LeBron, though. I mean, LeBron has shown to be, you know, he's a different type of cat when it comes to, you know, being a nice guy, being kind of forgiving. You know, he played that villain role in, in 2010, 2011, didn't really like it, kind of went back to being his, you know, wholesome self, you know, that we know LeBron James to be. But, you know, the, the talk is, and I guess it's maybe more of a rumor than a talk is, if Cleveland were, could make a deal to get Andrew, give Andrew Wiggins up for Kevin Love and there will be other pieces to go along on each side, but basically that's the crux of the deal. Now you're talking about a rook going from a rookie with tremendous upside and talent but may not pan out for another three, four years to a guy in Kevin Love who is proven in this league. You know, I've been critical of Love because I don't think he can take your team to a championship. I don't think he's a transcendent player. I think he's a guy who compiles stats and he's a nice player. But you put him with LeBron, with Kyrie Irving, I'm sorry, that's a little bit of an upgrade over Ricky Rubio and Kevin Martin. I mean, no, it's, no a, it's a slight upgrade. And for me, Mark, the reason I would like Kevin Love is because, you know, I've said for years, Years. LeBron James, for the most part, in the NBA, I think he's a power forward because he needs the space offensively. The problem is when he has to guard guys like David West and those traditional fours on defense. Kevin Love is one of the few guys, maybe a Dirk. Ryan Anderson's a decent rebounder, but not a great rebounder, but he's one of the few guys that can rebound, be a big body on defense, and space the floor on offense. That would yep. let LeBron play small <laughs> forward. If you don't play with a guy like that, then I think LeBron has to play the four in spite of the inconveniences. You can hand, uh, you can hand LeBron James the keys to a Ferrari with, uh, you've got a Kyrie Irving at point guard. You would have, I don't know who you would have at the two, but I, I've heard about people taking waiters, right. you know, them trading Dion waiters. Uh, he's basically a two at this point, uh, which you wouldn't have Andrew Wiggins. And then you would have LeBron at the three or four. If you had Kevin Love at the four and Anderson Verizhao, who's a LeBron James favorite, yeah. at the five, you'd have a squad right there that's better than what Miami could put together. I don't know about anything else on the bench. I guess you, Tristan Thompson could play. Yeah. Uh, he may end up being in a deal. Yeah. Anthony Bennett. I would get rid of him before I would get rid of uh, Tristan Thompson, <laughs> but that's just me. Yeah. Uh, and then you could have some. You could have some really, really. But then you have to deal with the whole mindset of I'm going to help Dan, Dan Gilbert, Gilbert right. win a championship. I'm going to hand that dude a trophy someday and we're going to be sm man I just don't I don't know how you could do it. From a basketball standpoint, it makes it would make tremendous sense if they could pull that deal off because I think they would end up putting Tristan Thompson in a deal because he's too attractive and he would probably he would come off the bench. Verjao would be the five love, the four. And so Tristan Thompson, he's young. He's a Dennis Rodman-ish type figure. He's extremely valuable. Anthony Bennett, you know, Anthony Bennett right now is going to be as valuable probably as he's going to be. Like if you think Anthony Bennett's going to be a bust, if you think you made a mistake, better trade him now while there's still that possibility in people's mind. Oh, he may become a good player because if you wait two years and then everybody sees he's not going to be good, nobody's going to trade for him. So when you look at the assets of Tristan Thompson, uh, Dion Waiters, if you see fit to move him, um, 
you know, all these other guys they have. And then the draft picks we talked about before the show. You have the assets to not only get that big three, but then put some people around that can play. Ray Allen, I've heard that people have pretty much said if he's going to play next year, he would like to follow LeBron James. So you almost have Ray Allen in your back pocket if you get LeBron James, wow, too. Wow, I didn't heard that. So, yeah, I mean, basketball-wise, I think they would win the East, and I think they'd be able to contend with whoever wins the West. But, Mark, I'm with you. That Dan Gilbert situation is a factor. It'd be a factor for me, and you would assume it's a factor for LeBron. Just looking real quickly at the Cleveland. Now, looking at Twitter, Adrian Wojnarowski from Yahoo says that the Miami Heat still feel confident they're going to keep LeBron James despite what they say his agent's agenda is. Yeah. They said he's got a strong mind of his own. And at the end of the day, he and, and – Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh are good friends, so there's there's a good chance that if I had to say a favorite, but Cleveland's got more that they can work with. Like they look at some pieces that they they could move and get rid of uh, to save salary to make make room for LeBron and to build around him. Lou Dang, he'd have to go fourteen and a half million a year. He'd have to go, so that's that's some space. Spencer Hawes is gone, so there's some some money that'll be there. Jarrett Jack probably gonna have to get rid of him and his six million. Um, Dion Waiters and his almost four million. Andrew Wiggins is what you were talking about trading for uh, Kevin Love. So you could have a really, really solid team around him. Of you know, just based to, based on what they've got left of uh, very Zhao, Tristan Thompson, uh, Kyrie Irving. LeBron, Anthony Bennett, Kevin Love. You'd have a squad right there. And if Ray Allen were to come along, that would be – I mean, it's a stopgap. It's a short-term fix. But yeah. you've got three number ones next year. I'm pretty sure, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Miami has three number ones. If I were them and I knew I was getting LeBron James and I was immediately going to vault into playoff contention, I'd be trading those ones yes. uh, for Kevin Love so that I could keep – And you know, I would I would try to get rid of Lou Alding with that big salary. I would try to get rid of Deion Waiters because I don't like him. I would try to get rid of Jarrett Jack because – he makes too much money, yeah. and then I would try to trade those picks for players so that I could save some money and so that I could still keep a core talent around him. Yeah, and Dang, Dang is gone, so he's going to be off the books. And Jared Jack is such a good player, you can get some things for him. People will gladly let you free up salary and take Jared Jack on. A lot of people are interested in Jack. You know, I would say this to Miami, though. The whole – his agent, you know, he has a mind of his own, his agent – uh, don't go there. Look, LeBron James is a businessman. LeBron, we all know LeBron can think for himself. That's not an issue. LeBron has Rich Paul, who's his agent now. He knows Rich works for him. I mean, it's not like he's saying, okay, LeBron, uh, you go on vacation while I take all these meetings. You know, LeBron is the head of this. Yeah. He, I mean, LeBron has told him, I'm going out of town, clear my head, spend time with my family. You meet with whoever, you get their pitches, you take notes, take good notes, and when I get back, we'll sit down and look at it and see who I want to meet with face-to-face. -face. This isn't Rich Paul telling LeBron, oh, this is what we're going to do. LeBron is the orchestra. LeBron is the player. He knows that the agent works for him, so don't put this on LeBron. Well, you know, if LeBron, you know, if the agent would get out of the way, you know, LeBron would want to do blah, blah, blah. No, no, no. LeBron's going to make his decision whether it's to stay with you or do something else. Don't put it, don't say it's the agent. No, LeBron is too, he's not that weak of a figure. If you had to put odds on it, LeBron in Miami, Chris Bosh in Miami. Because hmm. Dwayne I, Wade's thing, he ain't getting yeah. that money anywhere else. I would still say the Le LeBron stand in Miami is where I'd put the odds. Chris Bosh, I would probably put less odds just because that Max deal's out there in Houston. And I don't think if my if it depends on what he wants from Miami. Miami would be somewhat okay letting him go if he wants a lot of money. I think they would say, you know what, we'll just we'll start looking at the Arizas and the Dangs. We'll just try to, you know, use your leftover money and bring in good players, you know, multiple good players. If they ha if Chris Bosch wants like 15, 16 million, if he wants something like that. So, I would say the odds are a little bit more in favor of him taking that money in Houston. Man, this is going to be fun. This is going to be a fun next week. Before we go to break, Carmelo Anthony, he's heard all the pitches. Uh, it's funny how things change. Oh, he's listening to Chicago. He's really interested in Houston. <laughs> we'll see about Dallas. I didn't hear a single word about Dallas after his uh, no. visit there. But So it looks like it's Knicks, Houston Rockets, maybe – Maybe if LeBron and Carmelo Anthony end up playing, I said this on Twitter the other day with the Lakers, for Kobe Bryant, for Kobe Bryant, not with him, 
for Kobe Bryant just to get him another trophy. I'll never root for LeBron James again. I'll say it be on the record again. I'll never root for LeBron James again if he goes to the Los Angeles Lakers with Kobe Bryant. Can never. I, can I say this real quick about Dallas? Look, I know $10 million is, is a lot of money, but it's not that league minimum Dirk was talking about a couple of weeks ago. I mean, yeah. He, he said, oh, I'll play for the league minimum as long as we can get I mean, $10 million is, is not a it's a discount to a degree, but it's still $10 million that's going to affect how many good players you can get Dirk. So, you know. Yeah. Come on now. A couple other things. I do want to hear where you think Carmelo Anthony is going to go. Nerlens Noel playing well yeah, in the Summer I heard. League. I've, I've been watching a little Summer League action. I didn't get to watch him play, but I saw his stats. He He's looking pretty good. Yeah. So his, uh, his game, uh, how they reworked his whole game over the, the past year when he was out with that ACL, it seems to work for the – Philadelphia 76ers, and now they're going to have him, and next year they're going to have Joel Embiid. If it helped to him, it worked. Ooh. They could be pretty good in the uh, next couple of years. Picture that defense. You got, you know, probably one of the best defensive the point guards in the game. Then you have two, like, shot blocking, you know, octopi out there just, octopi. just swatting like things away. I mean, if it's healthy, it's going to be nasty, but you know my thing on Embiid. You know, we'll just have to wait and see. All right, Carmelo Anthony, where's he going? Carmelo Anthony, I believe, will be a New York Nick. What do you say? Lakers. Lakers. I'm going to go. It's, it's going to be tight, but I'm going to still go with the New York Knicks. Why? I think uh, this will go against something that I said for weeks. I didn't think the Knicks would bring him back for Max, but I think he. I think they're willing to. I'm hearing they're willing to give him the Max. And you, I know you, what you believe on Carmelo. Oh, yeah. Show me the money. Yeah, the, and the Knicks obviously can pay him more because they're his his uh, his former team. They can pay him more than any other team. So I lean towards him taking the max money, 130 mil. Can I besmirch a man for taking 129 million over five years, over a 96 million dollar four year contract? Not necessarily, but. I said it all along. Carmelo Anthony is all about the money. He he doesn't care about winning. He doesn't. He'll tell you that he does. But if he did, he'd go someplace else because I'll, the Knicks are going to suck. I will throw this out here though, and it's 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 a few it, it's a few factors that could accumulate to the difference not being so much. First of all, you could hack hack off about that differential. Hack off about twenty of it because that's just the extra year for a year. Yeah, that's that's the extra year plus New York taxes. taxes. Phew, you know, obviously a Miami or a California, Florida or Texas. California, though, if he was playing in yeah. Al- Los Angeles, it'd yeah. be the same or worse. Yeah, it'd be worse in California. But if you look like a Florida or Texas, you know, that would drop a little bit. And so, um, you know, it, it just – it would make – that's a huge gap, what you just said. But those couple of factors would make it a little more comparable. And if he has any ounce of winning in his blood, you know, then he would he would do – I think he has an ounce of winning. I, I, he's more about his money, I agree. But I, I think he wants to, you know, do a little bit of winning too. If I'm Phil Jackson, I'm I'm pitching him on this next year. You're not gonna be we're not gonna be very good. But the year after that, we got nobody on the side. You know, the the big contract, the albatross that is Amari Stoudemire, Stoudemire is off the book. So we'll have a bunch of money. I don't know who's gonna be available. Maybe a Kevin Love uh, that they could go after if Kevin Love Rondo. doesn't get traded. Rondo, some some big big name guys that we could spend that money on, and we could get you another guy within the next year. But New York's gonna suck. And if he do, if he goes back to New York, he is admitting that this next year doesn't matter to him. He doesn't care. Uh, I'll I'll just take the money, the extra thirty million, that extra security. Can't necessarily blame a guy for taking extra money for an and for another year because one hundred and thirty million dollars sounds pretty good to me. And I know one thing they're trying to do. I've been hearing is they would love to deal Amari Stoudemire to Philadelphia. Philadelphia is one of the few teams. They're probably the only team who they're talking to Houston or talking to New York, they will take on people's bad contracts. Yeah. Jeremy well, because Lynn, they're going to be bad this next year. If they've got one year left, I'd take on all those they're contracts. They're going to take on those bad contracts. Now, they're not going to do it for nothing. Like like uh, New York, they want a young Amon Shumper. So, uh, yeah, we'll take Amari's bad deal, but you need to give us a young piece that we like to yeah. make it worth our while. So who I is running the Sixers? Because I, I want I want to be their friend. Yeah. Because <laughs> what they're doing right now is genius. It is. I mean, you look at um, you know, the the, the foreign guy Sark, you know, they, he's not coming over. He's an asset, a good player. If it works what they're trying to do, again, it's about Embiid's health with Noel, Philadelphia could be lined up for something pretty nice. It may not be for a few years, but boy, their assets and their young players are exactly, impressive. Exactly. I'd like to see what they'll end up doing. Mello. He's going to stay in New York. I'll just go ahead and say it now. I don't think Kobe Bryant could possibly 
Uh, can Kobe could he leave leave money on the table and restructure a contract right now? I don't know how the how the CBA and all that. I mean, I know he wouldn't do it, but could he yeah, like conceivably just agreed. say, "All right, look, I want to get so and so, so I'll give you some money." Could he do that? I, I'm not sure. That's a good question. Like mutually, you know, hey, you know, I want to give up. Hey, we'll take your money back. It, yeah. may, I don't see why not, but the CBA there could be something in there like. We'll that. have to look. We'll have to see. All right, let's hit a break. Um, that's your NBA look. We'll see where uh, where these folks go. Shout out right quick to the River Valley Tropics playing really well right now in Legion Baseball. Uh, 9-0 and in conference. They just finished third in a recent tournament, and they are 9-0 and in this River Valley Conference. Thank you to uh, Brent Tinkley for sending us the information. We'll get that posted later today. Uh, big shout out to my boy Jace Hudson for pitching pretty well for those guys. I uh, hadn't seen the most recent thing to see if he's uh, he's pitched, but the last time that I read their stuff, he was uh, he was hitting well, he was pitching well, and he's on his way to Southern Arkansas University. So the River Valley Tropics playing really well. If you want to send sports information to me locally, you can go to. Uh, rivervalleyleader.com and you can find my information or I can just tell you right now mark at rivervalleyleader.com that's how you can email me and as always you can give us a call on the sports blitz at 968 news we'll be here between 11 and noon so just get yourself involved in the show answer today's CrossFit Russellville poll question we'll be back to deal with that much more right after the break Hi folks, Richard Roberts with Cogswell Motors in Russell. You know, we've been in business since 1949. A dealership doesn't stay in business that long under the same ownership unless you're doing something right, and that's taking care of customers. We have the largest selection of new Ford, Lincoln, Mazda, and pre-owned vehicles in the River Valley. So if you want the most for your trade, the best interest rate on financing, and the best price on a new or pre-owned automobile, come to Russell and see us. We're at 1900 East Main or visit us on the web at cogswellmotors.com. If you didn't count on KARK for today, this morning, here's what you met. Updated news. Please continue searching for suspects after a home intrusion overnight. Developing stories. It's another piece of presidential history turning up here in Arkansas. And weather and traffic on the force. Uh, Friday night, Saturday morning, uh, we'll bring us our next chance right now. Every 10 minutes. Around the clock. Making your day easy. So rise and shine and count on. Count on. Count on. KRK4 today. RiverValleyLeader.com is the number one local source for instant news in the River Valley. Offering HD video and live streaming along with top-notch coverage of all the news and events around the area. The River Valley Leader is the only place to go for all the information you need. Check out the newest local business featured on the site, as well as police news and coverage from important meetings, along with the personal stories, all at one convenient click. Check out rivervalleyleader.com. Today, there are more than 20 brands of cars being sold in America. So to be noticed, Ford and Cogswell Motors have to go further than anyone thought we could. How does Ford stand out above the crowd? Not just with plug-in vehicles like the new 2013 Ford Fusion Energy that gets a projected 100 miles per gallon equivalent, but also with a line of gas vehicles equipped with the innovative EcoBoost engines combining power and efficiency, plus a full measure of technologically advanced features. We invite you to stop into Cogswell Motors today. We go further than anyone thought we could. So that you can go further too. We weren't here Friday, so we've got to catch up on a topic that it's just wow. Yeah. It is a yeah. wow to me. Welcome back into the Cogswell Motors Studios. Martin Freeman, Weldon Braxton, Maddie Lassiter here with the Sports Blitz. Doriel Green Beckham, three years ago, was the number one overall recruit in the country. Those Razorback fans who remember watching his press conference will remember the microphone not being off. I do. Oh, my gosh. That was so awful. Everybody in the in the world thought it was down to Missouri and Oklahoma – or Missouri and Arkansas, excuse me. And everybody said – uh, you know, he's got a really good chance of coming to Arkansas. A lot of the – you go to Hogville and, oh, it's Arkansas. It's Arkansas. We know it's 100% Arkansas. And Hogville is the most pessimistic, idiotic place in the world most of the time. So when they say something like that, I thought, man, it could be Arkansas. <laughs> you listen to the, the press conference on national TV, on national signing day, and on ESPN, uh, they go from the studio to Doriel Green Beckham's uh, school where they're about to do the announcement. 
and somebody's microphone's not off back in the studio, and they say, it's Arkansas. And he just, it's like they knew uh, he's going to pick Arkansas. He's tipped me off. And I'm just thinking, oh, yes, we just got the number one recruit <laughs> in the country. We just got this wide receiver that they called the LeBron James of high school football. He puts on the Missouri hat. And three years later, we've hated his guts ever since. Yeah, uh, yeah. He's been very good. Maybe not quite the LeBron James of, of football, but he's been very, very good uh-huh. until – this offseason, you may not have heard, but Doriel Green Beckham was released from the Missouri football program because of a domestic violence incident. Uh, there were reports that he had hit a woman and just some ugly, ugly accusations that were flying around about Doriel Green Beckham. Long story short, he's no longer at the University of Missouri. He's transferring to the University of Oklahoma. A uh, little inside information, one of our friends, a friend of the show, Sean Caldwell, former co-host of the Sports Blitz, actually lived in Springfield, Missouri when Doriel Green, before he was um, adopted by his coach right. there in Springfield, uh, Coach Beckham, he lived in that, he went to that school. He coached Doriel Green Beckham in junior high and was around that, that school And he knew that Coach Beckham was a big Oklahoma fan, so he thought it was Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri in some order. And it turns out that Doriel Green Beckham, he took the the helicopter treatment pretty well when when Missouri flew in on the helicopter and they they pulled out all the stops. They get him to come. Don't know what else they offered, but uh, long story (laughs) short, Doriel Green Beckham is back in the good graces of the University of Oklahoma. Although he's going to apply for a waiver, he's ineligible to play this year. And, well, before I get your thoughts, I'll just say I have a hard time believing he's ever going to step foot on the field for the University of Oklahoma. He's going to be eligible for the draft after this year. Right. He's going to work on his game, and the University of Oklahoma gets nothing out of this. Why? Like, what What are they putting on that petition? That's what I want. Like, what are they, what's their yeah, explanation? Uh, <laughs> he was, he, he, it was an accident. He didn't mean to yeah. hit that girl, and so let him play. Yeah, I mean, but you, you're right on the money. I don't believe he'll, I don't believe he'll play unless, obviously, if the miracle happens, he gets the waiver and he's eligible this year, then he'd play, but I don't. I don't think we see that happening. If he does, he's going to the NFL. There's no question about it. Uh, you know, this is a situation to where people ask me all the time. You know, when a player gets in a situation, you know, would you take him on your team? You know, it it, it depends on your security and your program. You know, different programs are at different stages. In some situations, a coach, you have to keep the ship tight. I'm talking about super, super tight to where you can't allow anything. You know, every hiccup, every wrong misstep, you got to cut somebody from the team, and you certainly can't bring on somebody else's problem from another school. Other situations, you know, you're the king of the campus as a coach. You're a historic football program. You got the machine rolling. You're getting four and five stars all the time. You know, you bring this guy in, it may work out fine if it doesn't fine. So, you know, with this situation uh, with with Doriel Green Beckham, Oklahoma, uh, I think they were confident, and secure in their standing to where. It's not going to really hurt them if it works out or if it doesn't work out. Uh, but other programs couldn't pull that off or wouldn't have the confidence to do so. Uh, so but I agree with you. Uh, it, it's a funny situation. I don't think he'll play. He's going to put his name in the NFL draft and uh, um, after this year, and then he'll be gone. A lot of people are saying that Oklahoma had nothing to lose. I'd like to talk to my dad or some folks that are in that area and what they think about – they probably don't know much about it because he's been in SEC territory and once – he didn't decide to go to Oklahoma. It was just kind of like, ah, whatever, who cares? Yeah. But uh, the stink around this guy after some of the stuff that he was doing in Missouri, you know, he, he was big man on campus from day one. I'm the number one recruit in the country. Everybody wanted me, and I could have gone anywhere I wanted, and I chose you. I'm going to do what I want type thing. I got in some trouble uh, a number of times, but it, Oklahoma, they people that are saying they're taking on no risk, it's kind of kind of foolish in my opinion. Yeah, they, they don't have to worry about uh, if he doesn't get to play, oh, well, they hadn't lost anything. If he does, they got one of the best players in the country right there. But at the end of the day, man, it's kind of the precedent that they're starting that if Doriel Green Beckham can play – from now on in the NCAA, you can just basically, if you get in trouble, you can just go someplace else and play. I mean, they, okay. I don't see any way 
that the NCAA can grant this waiver because you know, they're having a hard time with, with people, okay, grandma's sick, so I'm going to transfer back to a school that's closer to home even though it's four or five hours away uh, because I you know I really don't like it over here. I'm on the bench. I'm at USC, and I, I don't like it. Uh, so I'm going to come back here to Arkansas, and I'm going to play because my grandma's sick, and she's in Little Rock, and Two I'm going to play Two yards in the cloud of dust. Uh, yeah, yeah. Th- w- that kind of thing. You're going to see that happen except for it's going to be I got in trouble, got busted for weed, and you know, I couldn't stay off the weed, and I, now I want to go play over yeah. here, and I'm going to be in the, immediately eligible. You, I see zero chance that he gets uh, eligible. So let, so you're saying from the NCAA – you're not saying from Oklahoma's standpoint. You said it'd be, it'd be foolish to think that from the NCAA's perspective. That was, yeah, just well, to be I, mean, I think it's kind of crappy of Oklahoma to do this because yeah. it's like they're condoning that behavior, really. Yeah. But – I also think from the NCAA standpoint, they cannot make him eligible this year just yeah. because of the precedent they'd be setting. Well, yeah, I, I agree with that. From the NCAA, you can't do that. From Oklahoma's standpoint, though, is it sleazy, is it slimy? Sure, but you're Oklahoma. You can pull this off. Just like if Nick Saban took on something like this that didn't work out, she don't question, who's going to question Nick? I mean, Bob Stoops isn't quite at that level, but he has been a big-time coach for more than a decade and a half or so. He's got a national championship. He's won every single BCS Bowl. I mean, he has clout. You know, so there's a few people that can pull this off, all those slimy and sleazy. But, yes, from the NCAA standpoint, there is no way in the world you can grant this. No, we'll see. We'll see if that turns out to to happen or not. I I just find it very hard to believe that he's going to play. He's going to go. He's going to take advantage of the facilities for a year when he wouldn't have been able to otherwise. And he's going to go to the NFL. And Oklahoma will have gained, Lord knows what, I don't know, bad press. Uh, Speaking of bad press and some bad issues going on with the person, we'll make the turn to the NFL real quickly. Josh Gordon. Very, very talented wide receiver for the Cleveland Browns. The only wide receiver in NFL history, if I'm not mistaken, to have two 200-yard games in a row. Uh, that's He's a very, very talented player. He's had some issues, uh, more than some issues. He's looking at a year-long suspension from the NFL. He gets arrested this weekend for DWI, and it's just another in a sad line of uh, basically screaming for attention that Josh Gordon is doing. Mm. A lot of people are calling for him to be uh, thrown off the roster, thrown out of the NFL, blackballed completely. I think, you know, maybe it's just the the tender heart that I have. I think he's just got this cry for help that he needs somebody. And I saw some people tweeting this too. Somebody needs to get a hold of him. Yeah. Somebody needs to help this kid before he ends up dead. Well, he does need help. There's no question about it. I'll, let me start with this from the Cleveland Browns standpoint. Would I release him from my roster? Absolutely not. I am not releasing Josh Gordon. Here's why. Um, what's somebody else going to do as soon as I drop him? They're going to pick they're him gonna up. They're going to pick him up. But they'll be like, well, you know, he you know, he didn't do all that stuff on our team. And you know, he's one of the best receivers in the game. We'll take him. So does he need to be what, he's suspended? And I don't think the Browns are going to have that burden on them. The league's going to take care of his suspension and discipline. Uh, but as far as still having him as an asset on my roster, yes. Yes, I still want him as an asset, kind of like Alden Smith. I'm not, I wasn't dropping Alden Smith from San Francisco, so you know, Pete Carroll can go swoop, you know, scoop him up or somewhere. It's like, oh, he's healed, forgiven, and now he's sacking Kaepernick every other play. You know, Forget about that. If he's going to be suspended in a drug program, rehab program, fine then. I'm not saying he should be on the field playing, but he is still my asset, and if and when he does get his stuff back together, he will be in a Cleveland Browns uniform, not somebody else's uniform. So I want to make that clear about releasing him. I do agree. I do believe, yes, he needs to be away from the team. Uh, you know, He should be suspended, not just thrown away from the league, but suspended and in some type of treatment. That is necessary. He should not sniff football this season. But when it comes to releasing him as an asset, no, 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 no. Because I got Pittsburgh in my division that would look at him, uh, but, you know, Baltimore. Everybody. You know, yeah, I mean, everybody. everybody It'd be the, the team with the highest waiver claim priority that would get him. Exactly. So, yes, he is an asset on my team, but, yes, he needs to go away and get himself fixed for the first time in recorded history you're gonna i want you to to pause this and save it to your computer somewhere so that you can remember this for the rest of your life there's a person that josh gordon needs to emulate he needs to pattern himself after in in one way 
Pac-Man Jones. <laughs> blackballed from the league. You've had some some bad issues, some really bad issues in your life. And now he's speaking at rookie symposiums, man. Yeah. He's he's turned his life around to the point that he's able to play. He's not great. He was he, a lot more was thought of him uh, early on in his career than is now. But he's not the the pariah that he that Josh Gordon is now and that he was before. He's got to get away from the game, like you said. There's there's no choice now. Yeah. They were going to think about shortening his suspension or doing something to work with him. Now he's got to go through some treatment. He's got to go through some, uh, I don't know, There, there's a, what was it, Lucas that was doing drug treatment oh, with, yeah. with athletes and things yeah, like that. John Lucas. Uh, but he, he needs to go, somebody needs to get a hold of him. Somebody needs to find a way to reach him in one way or another. Uh, I know how I'd try to reach him, but I would I would just, man, I'm hoping that good things will, hap- will happen in, in years from now. He'll look back on this and, and be able to help people who are in the same situation he's in uh, because he'll have something to say years from now if he can turn this around. If not, like I said, man, he's just as likely to end up dead as on an NFL roster within the next five years. You're absolutely right. And the other part about this from Josh's perspective is, you know, you, you have to want it. You know, we always talk about help's available, but it doesn't matter if you don't want it, if you don't fully embrace the help. I mean, there's many success stories and there's many stories of guys, you know, ruining their lives, uh, you know, end up leading to possible dying because they just – the help was put out there to them, but they just didn't have the heart and the desire to want the help. And so the success stories of Pac-Man Jones is it appears Tyron Matthew, although he's still young, we're still waiting to see. It appears he's on that same track getting his stuff together. Those guys got to a point to where they said, we want help. Not, oh, I'm being made to go through some rehab and I'm just going to roll my eyes through and get out and keep doing what I'm doing. you got to go out and seek the help and seek uh, the treatment. And if, if Josh Gordon is at that point, then he can do some good for himself. But if not, it's just going to be going through the motions of treatment and rehab. Yeah. All right. Let's hit a break. A um, little baseball news for you. Jeff Samarja traded to your A's. Yeah, like yeah. That? Well, my A's now have a pitching surplus. I don't know what we're going with Tom Malone. Were they man. still after David Price, too? Is that well, happening? No, I, I I can't see that. Okay, because cause I heard after the Samarja trade that they were still looking at it. I was thinking, good Lord. Yeah, the thing is – they, they were going after them both trying to get one. The price for David Price was higher because David Price has been an elite pitcher for yeah. years where Samard has been good the last couple of years, but he's been great this year. So it's, it was harder for Chicago to ask for uh, the pieces that Tampa Bay wanted. Uh, but at the same time, you know, it's not a Billy Bean-like move. Normally he likes the farm system. He likes to trade big names to bring in youngsters. Uh, but they trade a couple of top prospects to get Jeff Samarja. Uh, they have, a, like I said, have a pitching surplus now. Tom Malone made – you know, go to the bullpen now. All I know is it's great news for my A's. Plus, the margins under contract next year, too. So it's not just a rent for three months, too. So I'm looking to see what the A's can Look do. Look at you. Yeah. That's your baseball news yeah. for the day. Uh, there's some all-star game stuff coming up. Nelson Cruz going to be starting after his biogenesis investigation and his 50-game uh, suspension. That's kind of controversial. A lot of folks uh, talking about that. Yeah. And we'll see if, uh, if anything more comes up. I think it's just – going to be talk like it always is so uh, we'll look at our CrossFit Russellville poll question after the break as well as some honors preseason honors some watch lists for Razorback football players today's question though which are you more confident in the quarterback or the point guard position at the University of Arkansas chew on that give us a call at 968 news we'll be here till noon Hi folks, Richard Roberts with Cogswell Motors in Russell. You know, we've been in business since 1949. A dealership doesn't stay in business that long under the same ownership unless you're doing something right, and that's taking care of customers. We have the largest selection of new Ford, Lincoln, Mazda, and pre-owned vehicles in the River Valley. So if you want the most for your trade, the best interest rate on financing, and the best price on a new or pre-owned automobile, come to Russell and see us. We're at 1900 East Main, or visit us on the web at cogswellmotors.com. Com. If you didn't count on KARK for today, this morning, here's what you met. Updated news. Please continue searching for suspects after a home intrusion overnight. Developing stories. It's another piece of presidential history turning up here in Arkansas. And weather and traffic on the force. Uh, Friday night, Saturday morning, uh, will bring us our next chance rain. Every 10 minutes. Around the clock. Making your day easier. So rise and shine and count on. Count on. Count on. KRK4 today. 
RiverValleyLeader.com is the number one local source for instant news in the River Valley, offering HD video and live streaming along with top-notch coverage of all the news and events around the area. The River Valley Leader is the only place to go for all the information you need. Check out the newest local business featured on the site, as well as police news and coverage from important meetings, along with the personal stories, all at one convenient click. Check out rivervalleyleader.com. Today, there are more than 20 brands of cars being sold in America. So to be noticed, Ford and Cogswell Motors have to go further than anyone thought we could. How does Ford stand out above the crowd? Not just with plug-in vehicles like the new 2013 Ford Fusion Energy that gets a projected 100 miles per gallon equivalent, but also with a line of gas vehicles equipped with the innovative EcoBoost engines combining power and efficiency, plus a full measure of technologically advanced features. We invite you to stop into Cogswell Motors today. We go further than anyone thought we could, so that you can go further too. Welcome back into the Sports Blitz on a Monday. Mark Freeman, Weldon Braxton, Matty Lassiter in the Cogswell Motors studios. I hope you've had a happy 4th of July weekend. Went to Branson and watched some fireworks. Celebrated my birthday yesterday. Yeah. 29 whole years old. I'm starting my 30th year of life. That's weird. You and LeBron right on that 29 <laughs> dot right now. You and yeah, LeBron. I, you know, we're... There's yeah, there's really there's not much that separates me and LeBron James. We're we're kind of boys like that. Um, yeah, I gotta wish the the father in law a happy birthday. Uh, undisclosed number there. His today's his birthday, so okay. uh, got a lots of got lots of cool stuff going on. We'll talk some sports for the next eh, twenty minutes. How about that? We'll uh, we'll look at the NFL real quickly. We were talking about Josh Gordon and want to talk for just a second about something that I thought was kind of funny from last week. We talked a little bit about uh, Jimmy Graham with the New Orleans Saints and how he is classified as a tight end instead of a wide receiver cost him five million bucks just like that with one decision the arbiter decided to consider him a tight end which he is but he wanted wide receiver money because he lined up out there two-thirds of the time and you know it's really only fair that where you play you should be paid but the New Orleans Saints won and it basically comes down now to whether or not New Orleans can work out a long term extension with him very quickly right. or if these hard feelings are gonna fester. Drew Brees is saying now that he wants this Jimmy Graham deal resolved. He's like thirty five years old. Of course he wants the deal resolved. <laughs> he doesn't have much longer. If Jimmy Graham goes someplace else and they have to rebuild, right. they're gonna be in bad shape and his career, the end of his career is gonna be wasted. Um I'm I'm finding it very hard if I'm uh Jimmy Graham to play long term unless they really take care of me for a franchise where the coach came and testified against me the everybody was mm. against me to cost me five million bucks a year they better make it up to me in a big way yeah it, it, this is really a really tough deal because I mean there are feelings involved in this I mean you said like the coach testifying against you you're trying to get your money I I don't know the franchise tag you know if it's negotiable like could they give them a number in between the you know, it has to be the seven and the twelve. Like, or is it just? They hard? may. I mean, you they know. may be able to, but I or maybe they franchise tagged him. I, th- I think they're they're kind of slotted, aren't they? If they if they well, didn't want to franchise tag him, they could just sign him for whatever, right? Well, I mean, they could they could sign him to a long term deal, but you know, obviously you have to commit to him long term. It'd be hard. Yeah, it'd be hard it, for me to play there. It, it is difficult. It's something you have to think about. I mean, you know, from the New Orleans Saints standpoint. You know, you're looking at at the situation, and you say, "Well, you know, what do we project Jimmy Graham to be you know, over the years?" And I think, and I think they're a little bit cloudy on that, and that's why they're holding back. But at the same time, you're in win now mode. You mentioned Drew Brees is getting up there in years. Um, you know, you've got weapons on the outside. I mean, my goodness, they, I mean, they offensively they should be right where they need to be. Uh, but at the same, but at the same time, you look at it, Jimmy Graham. You know he's a, he, you know he's got to look out for his money too. He's got to look out for you know anything could happen at any point. I could tear my knee. You know something could happen. So you know this one year deal may sound great. You know I may be making a pretty good number, but it's just one year. I need some guarantees because he's been getting banged up some the last few years. You know a little bit of this, a little that, an ankle here, there. You get to that point and you've proven what you've proven over the last few years. It is time to look for some long-term security. It just is. We'll see how this turns out. 
uh, they better take care of them. If I, if it's if it's me and I'm Jimmy Graham, I'm saying, all right, you guys all testified against me. I remember you, 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 and you. Yeah. You better pay me, or else I'm gonna go someplace else, and I'm gonna do what LeBron and Chris Bosh could be doing to the Miami Heat in a couple weeks. <laughs> uh, a couple of other news and notes here. We're gonna look at the World Cup for just a minute before we hit a break. Um, Djokovic beats Federer for Wimbledon Championship. That's a uh, that's match. a little bit of news there. I didn't watch any of it except for what I was watching on the treadmill on like Friday, or I guess it was like Wednesday or Thursday there at the St. Mary's. And I'm mad that there's no like first take or something on that I can disagree <laughs> with. Uh, I'm, I'm paying attention to the tennis match, and I'm just like, this sucks. This is boring. But Djokovic, congratulations on winning that tennis match. You're in really good shape, now and you can play it. oversized ping pong. Yeah, you picked the Joker. Yeah, I did. Yeah, the joke. You're welcome. You know, Federer, I mean, he's like, okay, is he done? Is he done? And he finally gets back to a Wimbledon final, dominant on grass, but couldn't quite get past the Joker. Of course, Rafa got upset a little bit earlier. But I, I didn't get to watch it live because I was at church, but went back and watched it later. Very good five-set match. Very good. See, I can, I can pick winners. I, I can pick winners. Like, Djokovic, uh, that was just no – no worries. Just come listen to me. I'll tell you who's going to win. I told you who's going to win baseball. I don't care. That's exactly who's going to win baseball. Uh, looking at the World Cup, I told you who's going to win the World Cup. Germany's going to win the World Cup. He's got the uh, – uh, I almost said Australia. Ginobili's. You've got the money. You know, it's Argentina. Um, and I've got Germany. Germany's playing Brazil. And Ar- uh, Argentina's playing who? They're playing – In the World Cup semifinal, I'm... I am drawing a blank. That tells you how much we care about soccer – uh, Brazil, Germany, and Argentina, you got and it. dang, who is it? Was, Maddie, yeah. who are they playing? Argentina. Who's Argentina playing in the World Cup? That's right. Is it the, the Netherlands? Yeah, yeah that's, right. that's right. Yeah, Germany, that's right. Well, I, Germany's going to win their semifinal game, and it's pretty simple. Why? Oh, Neymar. Really? Hurt. Yeah. Uh, broken vertebra. That's, That's just sucks. awful. That yeah, sucks. it's a terrible, terrible injury that happened to him in their quarterfinal game where he was kneed in the back on purpose. Uh, yeah. the, the player said that he was trying his best to defend his team, and I really I don't think he meant to, to knee him in the back. I think he meant to hit him in the head. <laughs> and if you watch the replay that I've seen just a, a couple of times, when he jumped up, he, he made some sort of motion toward his head, and his knee, that was sort of a secondary consequence where he hit him, looked mm. like in the kidney. Mm. But it hit him in the ver- – Broke the third vertebrae on his back, and he had to be stretchered off. Neymar, obviously the best player in the, on the Brazilian team, a top five player in the world, easily, and he just basically he coasts Germany into the finals. Hey, hey well, you know Germany's missing von Schlotzenheimer, so hey. are they? Yeah, no, I did not know that. No, they're not. I was going to say I just I made that. Up. I just, you just made sneeze that up. in a name, and that's <laughs> a German. <laughs> <He just did. laughs> oh. Von Schlotzenheimer, you know, is going to play the left back for him. Sch- and, you know, <laughs> Schnitzel. Yeah, yeah, Slits, Slits and Nimer, you know. Oh, Lordy. All right, so Germany looks to have an easier road. Your boys from Argentina get through to the semifinals as well. I know you're yeah. sweating. No, well, here's well, well, I'm not sweating. I mean, it's soccer. But here's <laughs> the thing, though. I, I'm, I was really surprised Argentina got to this point. I mean, Germany, better all-around team, should win. Obviously, Brazil, probably co-favorites, but, you know, Germany – Give him the edge. I just said, look, I'll take the best player. You know, it's it's like you know, LeBron, Messi is. I do this all the time. I'll take the best player. Argentina, from what I've seen and heard, mostly they're not the best team, but boy, that Messi, he can make it happen. He does what I. You know, I talk about this all the time. When things are even, I take the best player, and you just you did it. You took the best player. I like it. A dream run to the semifinals. I like Argentina. Hey, they could go to the final. Netherlands, from what I've seen, though, are pretty good. Netherlands are salty. I watched like five minutes of. Uh, Costa Rica. No, of an MLS game. Oh, yeah. because it was on. It was on ESPN or oh, ESPN sure, Two. It was sure. right there. No, in five minutes, dude. Five minutes. Uh, but I, what I recognized is that those guys are not near as good. <laughs> <laughs> you know how I noticed that because when they kick it to each other, it wasn't all so smooth and on a rope and uh, you know just perfect handling and all that. No, it was just like some of these dudes <laughs> didn't look like they were all that great. But you know what? That's. That's what's going to happen with soccer. Like, I think the World Cup got people juiced up. Oh, yo, we're, not, we're out. Let me go find some soccer somewhere. Oh, MLS. Ooh. Yeah. You know what? You know, let's LeBron, free agency, Johnny, man, let's look at something else because you know, this soccer, it's not what I thought it was. Yeah. Well, we'll see if, uh, if the U.S. can capitalize on a run to the round of 16 and make some hay there in, uh, in MLS soccer. We'll see. Um, 
couple other big Arkansas Razorback related news topics that you want to hear right after the break. We're also going to get to our CrossFit Russellville poll question. We've teased it the entire show. We're going to tell you we're disagreeing on this topic. I'll just go ahead and tell you that right now. Which position are you more comfortable with coming into the next season in basketball and football? Point guard or quarterback? Your choice. Give us a call. We'll be back right after this break. Hi folks, Richard Roberts with Cogswell Motors in Russell. You know, we've been in business since 1949. A dealership doesn't stay in business that long under the same ownership unless you're doing something right, and that's taking care of customers. We have the largest selection of new Ford, Lincoln, Mazda, and pre-owned vehicles in the River Valley. So if you want the most for your trade, the best interest rate on financing, and the best price on a new or pre-owned automobile, come to Russell and see us. We're at 1900 East Main or visit us on the web at cogswellmotors.com. If you didn't count on KARK for today, this morning, here's what you missed. Updated news. Please continue searching for suspects after a home intrusion overnight. Developing stories. It's another piece of presidential history turning up here in Arkansas. And weather and traffic on the force. Uh, Friday night, Saturday morning, uh, will bring us our next chance rain. Every 10 minutes. Around the clock. Making your day easy. So rise and shine and count on. Count on. Count on. KRK4 today. RiverValleyLeader.com is the number one local source for instant news in the River Valley. Offering HD video and live streaming along with top-notch coverage of all the news and events around the area. The River Valley Leader is the only place to go for all the information you need. Check out the newest local business featured on the site as well as police news and coverage from important meetings along with the personal stories all at one convenient click. Check out rivervalleyleader.com. Today, there are more than 20 brands of cars being sold in America. So to be noticed, Ford and Cogswell Motors have to go further than anyone thought we could. How does Ford stand out above the crowd? Not just with plug-in vehicles like the new 2013 Ford Fusion Energy that gets a projected 100 miles per gallon equivalent, but also with a line of gas vehicles equipped with the innovative EcoBoost engines combining power and efficiency, plus a full measure of technologically advanced features. We invite you to stop into Cogswell Motors today. We go further than anyone thought we could. So that you can go further too. All right, it's time to get to some hog talk here on the Sports Blitz. Thank you to Jason for agreeing with me on this topic. We're going to talk about it here in just a second. How do you know what I'm going to say? You don't even know what I'm going to say. Well, uh, unless you just... You and I were talking about this before the show, and unless you go the other direction because of how great my argument is uh, now, I, then I, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Today's CrossFit Russellville poll question, which position are you more confident in entering the next season? This is a great Weldon poll question. Quarterback or point guard at the University of Arkansas? You've got Brandon Allen, and then you've got point guards. You've got uh, Anton Beard, and what was the other dude's name? Jabril Durham. Jabril Durham from uh, junior college. Uh, yeah, uh, we'll get to that here in just a second, but we're talking about football right now, and three hogs were named to preseason award watch lists. Uh, thank you to Jason for uh, the initial tweet that I saw. Jason uh, Kilburn gave me this information via Twitter, but I also saw that uh, Hogs Illustrated tweet, tweeted it. Andrew Hutchinson um, tweeted that Alex Collins and Jonathan Williams have been named to the Maxwell Award watch list, and Trey Flowers was named to the Bednarik Award watch list for the best defensive end in the country, or I guess it's the best defensive, defensive lineman. Player, yeah. Is it defensive player altogether? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so Trey Flowers, uh, Alex Collins, Jonathan Williams, all three. And, th- you know, this is time where we're about to start turning the page and talking Arkansas football, and I'm excited about that. Not really all that excited about the season because I know how it's going to go. They're going to play some really, really tough teams. And although you're going to see some improvement, you're not going to see a great record. All these people who are coming out already and saying seven or eight wins, just turn the dial down just a little bit or lay down the pipe, whatever it is, because it's not going to happen. I'm just saying I want it to happen. It's not going to happen. I'll be happy with breaking even and going 6-6, six and six, going 500 on the year. I'll be excited to see some growth in certain positions. I want to see the running backs play well. Alex Collins, Jonathan Williams, 
Corliss Marshall. Those guys can be a three-headed monster, and I think they can be pretty good. Uh, I think Brandon Allen will be better this year. And I thought that was where you were leaning when you were going to answer today's CrossFit right. Russellville poll question, but I think he can be better this year. But it's time to talk Arkansas football, and I'm excited about it. Yeah, it really is exciting. You know, it's good to see you know those players. I mean, these lists are obviously long, but just to be thought of – um, you know, Jonathan Williams, Alex Collins, one of the better two-headed monsters I think you'll see in college football, particularly with this offensive line. I think these boys are going to roll great this year. I think they're going to come off the ball. I think they're going to you know, blow people off. I think we're going to be able to run the football a little bit. Um, you know, obviously the passing game is what you want to look for in the defense. I think the defense is – I think it has people excited because, you know, stylistically it's at least going to be different. It, will it lead to being burned more? Sure. Will it lead to more interceptions and forced turnovers? Maybe. It's just I think the defense is interesting just because it'll be different. It's not Paul Haynes, Willie Robinson, you know, base vanilla, you know, play your gap, play your spot, and just be sound. You know, you gotta you're taking some chances. You're getting after the quarterback. You're doing some different things with your coverages. So I think the defense will be interesting. Uh, the passing game is an X factor. You know, who on the outside? Excuse me. Who on the outside is going to be making plays? You're going to bring in what's Robinson going by now? What what's his what's name is he going by now? He got rid of Joe. Oh, Joe. Yeah, Joseph. Joseph. Yeah, he's, he, jo- Joseph Robinson is going to give you a dynamic element as a true freshman. And so, uh, if those other guys can step it up, we'll see. All right, let's answer the poll question then. Who do you have? Be which are you more confident in? That was the the way the question was framed and worded. Which are you more confident in entering the 2014-2015 season? Point guard or quarterback? I'm more confident in the point guard. I don't know where. Dang! You, you, I thought you were going quarterback. I don't know why. I don't know where you got that from. I just I really don't. I just, oh, I, I'm come surprised. On now. I, I really don't know what come gave you that now. idea. I, I I'm trying to figure it he out. Okie doked me is what he I, did. I really did. I just I put it out there and you. You just assumed I was going to take the quarterback. No, I thought you said something about quarterback first. Maybe I just made that up. Maybe I was just excited because I thought we were going to have differing opinions. I'm going point guard as well, but then I guess I'll make the point for quarterback, and then we can both tag team. Well, I can make the quarterback point. I think that's probably where you got. Because you made the quarterback point. I made a quarterback point. But no, here's why I think it's the point guard position. It really has nothing to do with – Brandon Allen and, and and Anton Beard slash Jabril Durham. It's to me, first of all, if you want to say it's Anton Beard, he has a reinforcement in Durham. You know, that helps. Yeah. Plus, the team around the point guard is going to be better than the team around the point than the quarterback. I've said it already. Arkansas should really make some noise in basketball. I told you before the show, uh, Michael Qualls made noise at the Kevin Durant camp, uh, now invited to the LeBron James Skills Academy. I mean, that's huge, obviously, to get that honor. Uh, Not too many people get invited to LeBron's camp. George's Niang, some of the top returning players get invited to that. So Qualls' development, Bobby Portis' development and upside, you know, Kai Madden being more in a scorer's role, they're, they just have some things going on in basketball. Harris will be better and more comfortable. I mean, basketball is just – it's hard for me to see them not having something going on. Whereas in football, I believe in the improvement, but I have to see some things I haven't had any indicators for. i got to see, uh, you know, the pass protection. I have to see the receivers. I have to see how all this fits together around Brandon Allen. I'm not as sure about that. Now, Anton Beard and Jabril Durham – could be better players than Brandon Allen too. I'm not I'm not leaving that out as well. But Brandon Allen, you know, was it his shoulder more so, or was it more he just wasn't that good? I that's why I'm going to lean point guard. Now let me I'll make the quarterback case before I turn it over to you. As we've said, Brandon Allen was hurt. He played him. He got hurt in the Southern Miss game. So you got to go all the way back to there, and then look at his season since then, as far as when you judge him. Um, you know, he he is a guy who was a four-star for a lot of his high school career. A lot of people believe, I know you've said this before, the Arkansas effect <laughs> knocked him down to a three-star because, you know, obviously Bobby Allen, the connections, his father, you know, Arkansas was you know, pretty much the team. And those uh, scout and rivals like, oh, Arkansas, psh, knock him down a star. And so, I mean, so my point is you're talking about a guy with some talent uh, and some ability, but, again, I still have to go with the point guard. I'll continue your point, and you, you you made a good point about this, and you talked about it before the show uh, about how uh, 
you know, Brandon Allen, you've seen – this is the, the point for and against Brandon Allen. You've seen Brandon Allen play. You haven't yeah. seen Anton Beard play at a college level. I think he's going to be really good, and I think he's got a chance – to be successful and have an easier time of being successful than Brandon Allen. So that's why I'm going that way, and we'll talk about him here in just a minute. But I think Brandon Allen has a chance because of the fact that you look at what he's got. The offensive line's getting better. He's going to have some some weapons out on the outside, uh, which, you know, if he can just get somebody to catch the freaking ball when he yeah. throws it to him, that'll be, that'll be something. Uh, but having Alex Collins, having uh, Jonathan Williams, and then having another – Another piece there in Corliss Marshall that a lot of people are excited about. It's going to take some pressure off of him. And the fact that he can't be worse <laughs> gives me confidence <laughs> that he's going to be better this year. But uh, as for ceiling, yeah, I think Anton Beard is a really good point guard. I think he's going to be a guy who can, you know, put the t- he can shoot it, he can pass, he can set guys up. He's just, he's kind of got an old school feel to his game. I really like watching Anton Beard. I was very impressed watching him in high school, both at Parkview and then at North Little Rock. Uh, so he's, he's a guy that I'm very, very excited about watching, and that's why I've got a little bit more confidence in him. Part of that, though, deals with the fact that I've got more confidence the Razorback basketball team is going to be better than the football yeah. team. They don't play, I mean, the schedule that they're going to play is going to be tough, but they don't play this murderer's row that the football team plays. So in my confidence scale, I'm going point guard just simply because I think there's a higher ceiling and they're not playing quite the competition that the football team is. No, and you brought up a good point, too, and I don't have it in front of me, but I remember I think the basketball schedule came out, and that is nice. I think, I, I, again, I'm not remembering who they're playing, but it is you're avoiding the Floridas and Kentuckys. You may play them once, I think, but it's really set up nice you got some some South Carolinas on there I mean it's it's, it's gonna be really nice for basketball so that even leans more you know towards uh, uh the point guard position being better but I will say this I believe Brandon Allen will be much improved the team around him will be better he'll be better as well but basketball yeah I, I told you before the show I'm trying to tone down my excitement I don't like jumping into hype but it's hard for me not to get excited about this basketball team well if Michael Qualls can go to all these camps and learn how to play on a team, <laughs> then they can be really good. It seems like he's just like Michael Qualls and four other guys out there a lot of times. But uh, Bobby Portis is still growing. A lot of reports that he's nearing 6'11". Uh, when he was about 6'10", coming in, uh, and then Michael Qualls tearing up these camps and the point guards coming in, you've got pieces. You can see the things starting to come together. So it's, it's, it's all right to be getting excited about the basketball team. Have you ever seen a team – lose so many warm bodies but lose such little production i mean i'm not trying i That's mean just, true i mean you look at obviously cody clark when he showed up was pretty good and Kiko i like hit, hit some shots but you know those other two i mean you know you really you didn't lose much i guess is what i'm saying even though you lost a lot of bodies so people like oh they lost four you know five guys oh my god they lost a lot a chunk of their team i'm looking there saying the production is still pretty much back. The Cotman's, Bobby Porter's, Qualls, Phil Harris. I mean, so Arkansas will be all right. And then what they have coming in. All right, we got to get out of here. That's all the time we've got for today. Adrian Wojnarowski from Yahoo tweets now, Chris Bosh wants to play with LeBron James in Miami, but conversations between his camp and Houston ongoing today. Sources tell Yahoo. I'll be, I'd be very hard-pressed to turn down a max deal to play with James Harden and with – uh, Dwight, Dwight Howard, where you don't know what LeBron James is going to do. If you, if I hear even the slightest whisper from LeBron James that I'm considering that that Cleveland trip, see ya. I'm going to Houston if I'm Chris Bosh. Uh-huh. Going back home. Uh, he's from Texas to play with that squad and to get, not have to get pounded on as a as a five man playing the four instead yeah. and getting to stretch the floor some. I'd be going. Yeah, I agree with you, too. So we'll see. But max money. Max money. We'll see what happens when we get back. Who knows? All this could be shuffled. Carmelo, LeBron. I mean, Bosh, it could be settled when we come back. I doubt it. Some of it may, but yeah, we'll see on Wednesday. Carmelo's going through the recruiting process one more time. He and uh, he enjoyed his, his trip to Syracuse. Uh, it was a close trip from Baltimore, where he's from. Won himself a national championship in college. He, en- he enjoyed that recruiting process, but... He did. He hadn't really had this much heat on him as far as in a good way. You know, we're offering you max money. We're offering you to to change our whole roster to get you uh, in a long time. So he's he's taking this in. He's going to end up in 
New York. Just, I want just telling you. I want LeBron on the Lakers so I can see you on win on the next show. That's, I just want it to happen so I can just come I, and see honestly, you. Honestly, I'll be so disappointed. I, I literally, I'm not joking because I can't say it and not do it. Right, right. I would never root for LeBron James again. I believe it. If he played with, with Kobe Bryant. It'd just be I so dramatic. I, mean, I would not do it. And especially like LeBron, Kobe, and Melo. What kind of team is that? <laughs> like, you're literally not going to have anybody else worth a crap no. on that team. Uh, Because you can't afford them. Uh, There would be no way that they would be able to field a team or court a team that would be good enough to compete. And I would just be so mad because I just hate Kobe Bryant so much. Uh, Poor Kobe. Mark just can't give me love. Let's get out of here. Thank you guys for joining us today on a Monday. We'll be back on Wednesday at 11 o'clock for Weldon and Maddie. I'm Mark saying so long. RiverValleyLeader.com, 968 News. Be a part of Wednesday's show. We'll be back at 11 o'clock.